Shall we get started? And should we welcome people to the very, very first edition of our cricket power rankings? That just works really well, doesn't it? Our cricket, and then you just stick another word at the end of it because it's mine and yours, and it's cricket, and it's whatever it is we're talking about. And this is what we've got. It's our cricket power rankings. And over the space of, well, it wasn't the most thought out thing, was it, that we've ever done in the world. You've spent more time on this than I have, so I'm not going to steal your thunder too much. But came up with this idea, took a bit of inspiration from the NFL, um, something that I watch a lot of. And a lot of those guys have official power rankings and they have podcast power rankings and fan power rankings. And I think there's stuff for Formula One and there's some country music ones. And I was like, why is nobody doing this for cricket? And then I thought, well, let's, let's do it. Um, so I said to you, I said, can you list out your 25 top players in the world right now? And I did the same. We put together, and I think we had about six, didn't we, kind of players that we didn't agree on. So then we kind of fought about that and decided who was going to get there and who wasn't. We got there. And then then because well you are the biggest badger i know um gave you the the great honor of listing out these 25 cricketers in order male and female with your statistical analysis for the first ever power rankings yeah very simple statistical analysis i will just add um and i'm sat here and we're recording this and i can see my little my little paper notes of each yeah. name written out on my table after <laughs> moving names around like some kind of puzzle and I've been losing sleep over where certain players should be in this lineup because it was it was tricky trying mm. to kind of put people on a level that you thought was appropriate for where they're at, at the moment in the game um, but really fun at the same time um, and I hope that I feel like we've done a half decent job. Think um, so. And there's a lot there's a lot of good players that are not in this top twenty five. So I can't wait for the controversy. Yeah. So how this is gonna work, this this is as I say, the initial ranking of twenty five, because essentially we needed somewhere to start, and that's where we are right now. Um we agreed this morning very briefly that we have developed some form of point scoring system. Um and this will be a monthly uh, update, a monthly episode, a monthly video. Um, and the points updates and the scoring system will go into this. And essentially, it's what we kind of agreed on was that a five fur is essentially worth 100. So therefore, one wicket is worth 20 runs and therefore that one kind of point, so to speak. Then we've kind of gone for points that if you get 100 or you get five, you get another point. And if you win a series, you get another point on top of that. We haven't quite agreed on. Um, we feel there needs to be some form of multiplier with the, to bring the male and the female game into uh, comparison. Because clearly there's a lot of white ball cricket that gets played for the for the women's game. But then also as part of that, you don't get the opportunity to go on and score that 230 not out that, that Tremendi Mendes might do in the next test match that he goes and plays. So we just need to figure that bit out. And that needs a little bit of fine tuning. But the method is there. There will also be an opportunity to vote in kind of five players to bring into this top 25. It's not a gated community, you know, unlike a lot of other cricket things. This is open. We will have promotions and relegations. And I'm quite excited by it because I like all of this nerdy kind of power ranking stuff. And I think it can grow and it can have graphic design and it can have member involvement. It can have fan votes. And there's so many different things we can go for. Um, but we have the 25. You've got to stay right to the end of the video and the podcast to find out who's currently number one. Do you want to kick us off with the person that's currently sat in the precarious position of 25th in this league. Yes, I'm happy to kick off. So at number 25 of our first draft of the power rankings, we have Steve Smith. Love him or hate him, he's up there as one of the best cricketers in the world. Albeit he hasn't had the greatest year this year and hasn't really played that much recently. Notably, in 2024, he's only scored 213 runs in his 10, in 10 innings. Yeah. Um, he only scored 150 in the recent White Ball series that England played against Australia at the back end of September. So you feel like he's probably underperforming, under the radar, but he sneaks in as number 25. And just something to note this with Smith and the Aussies, they obviously play India in a five-match test series that, that 
starts next week. And Smith has his best test batting average against said Indian opponents. And he scored 900 against them. So he will be one to watch in that series. Yeah, he could be climbing. He could be climbing from 25th. I don't think he's getting relegated anytime soon. Another big dog. 24th place is Virat Kohli. During the month of October, played four innings, scored 88 runs. So not exactly the most productive time of it for Sir Virat Kohli. Um, yeah, we've mentioned here he's got 76 in that victorious T20 World Cup final, but since then hasn't really done a great deal. So much so that Gus Atkinson um, has scored three runs more than him in, um, in, in 2024. And um, we all know how good Gus Atkinson is, but Virat Kohli's a slightly kind of higher higher echelon. But again, as you said, he's got the BGT coming up. He will go well in those test matches. And I think he is going to be one of those cricketers that's going to be climbing up that ranking. I don't think he's going to get dumped out of this 25 anytime soon. And at number 23, I've got another Australian cricketer, but this time of the female uh, gender, shall we say, Beth Mooney. Now, she's an ever-reliable top-order left-handed batter. If you haven't seen Beth Mooney bat, she's almost guaranteed runs whenever she's out there in the middle. Um, currently ranked number one, according to the, T- the ICC rankings, uh, for as T20 batter. Um, she scored 763 runs across all three formats for Australia this year because they had a sort of one-off test match earlier in the year against South Africa. So they're one of the nations to have played all three formats this year. But Beth Mooney comes in at number 23. She's a gun. She is a gun. And that just proves that we are better and more educated than the ICC rankings because we've got Beth at 23rd. But there's still room. There's still room. There's one of the players at 22nd, one of the ones that we didn't actually agree on because I think you had this guy in your 25 and I didn't. Um, and I conceded because Ravindra... No, hang on. It is Ravindra Judadia because I didn't have him in there, but he is a gun. He's one of those kind of five-dimensional cricketers that's good at batting and bowling and fielding and, and making drinks and doing all that other good stuff. Um, what's he taken? 45 wickets across all formats this year. Um, he's just come out of a bit of a bit of a thumping, though, from New Zealand, hasn't he? New Zealand have absolutely smoked India in that test series. Um, so that's where we've got Ravindra Jadeja down in 22nd. I think he is one of those cricketers, to be fair to him, that he could be one that slides out of this top 25. Um, because I feel there's some players outside of this 25 that could sneak in there. I don't know how many spinners India are going to play in Australia. Philly could be on his way out. Yeah, there's a few people that they could their cards could be marked, isn't there, in this in this lineup? Um, and I'm going to go number 21. It's another Indian counterpart in. Ravi Chandran Ashwin, and no one has taken more wickets than the Indian I spinner have him this at year. Twenty-first in twenty twenty-four, <laughs> um, he's taken forty-six wickets at just under twenty-seven. Um, he surpassed five hundred Test match wickets, didn't he, in that series against England earlier on yeah. in the year, um, which was the second fastest in terms of matches played. He did it in ninety-eight Test matches, and he's currently seventh on the all-time. Test match wickets list, surpassing Nathan Lyon, who we'll obviously be coming up against in that series that I've previously mentioned, sort of the battle of the off spinners. But yeah, he's he's an Indian stalwart, is our uh, Rushwin. It just sounds like you're from some Lancashire mining town when people are uh, Ashwin lives at number seven on Coronation Street. Um, number 20, can he or can't he be bothered? Kane Williamson. Um, I think he's the second ranked ICC test batter at the moment behind Joe Root. 618 runs in six tests. He obviously turned down his central contract, didn't he, from New Zealand cricket. Played two of the tests against New Zealand. They won the series 2-0 and couldn't be bothered to play the third one, so went home so that New Zealand could ensure he was ready for the England series. Anyway, he's 20th um, and he'll probably score some runs against England. England's interesting, like, how many spinners are they taking to New Zealand? About seven. Yeah, quite a few, isn't it? Especially Mental. with with the the latest edition of Jacob Bethel as well coming in there. Mad, madness. Yeah. Anyway. 
yeah, interesting on that front in New Zealand conditions. Um, I'm, I haven't had anything other than an Australian or an Indian player to rail off yet, and I've got another <laughs> Australian for you. Yeah, to be fair, I've only had one. At 19, we've got Pat Cummins. Super Pat. The Aussie captain, he is a leader in on the pitch as captain and also in the attack, opening the bowling so often with Josh Hazelwood. And I'm sure he's set for another exciting Aussie summer. Um, 30 wickets across all formats in 2024. Uh, just under 24. Hasn't played that much cricket of late, though. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he fares. Um, heading into Australia's Test match summer, Pat Cummins at ninety. Yeah, I think he'll do well. He's 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 one of those. Well, he's part of an attack, isn't he? That if one of them doesn't get you, the next one will. And if it's not Hazelwood, it could be Cummins. And if it's not Cummins, it could be Stark. And if it's not Stark, it could be it could be Lyon. So, um, I dare I say, I suspect he will have a decent input going into to the next the next couple of rankings. Plus, he's going to have five opportunities to do so, isn't he, in Test match cricket, which not many of these guys and girls are going to have. Next up, Sophie Eccleston at number 18, the number one ranked bowler in ODI's anti-20 cricket. Yes, you might say it's a bit low, but actually during October, it's pretty quiet to be fair. Just took five wickets. I think that reflects a bit of what England were up to. I know they've got a couple of like big tours coming up, haven't they? Which I'm sure will give Sophie opportunity to take a few more wickets. And I'm sure she probably will. I do wonder whether there's a little bit with her that obviously the more time that people spend facing her and batting against her, the less the less effective she becomes. Not less skillful, but the less of a return that, that she comes about. I hope that she goes on to prove us wrong from an English perspective. Um, but I do think that might be part of the the reason as to why that month was a little bit quiet. Yeah, just on that, you make a really good point. I think people are almost not treating her with the same respect as she perhaps once had because they're like, yeah. at the end of the day, she's another bowler that we've got to try and take down, especially in how much white ball cricket's played in the women's game. Such a professional cr- cricket way to look at it. Just another body just to take down. I love it. Someone's got to do it. We're all batters, aren't we? Um, at number 17, I mean, what a year this player has had. I had <laughs> the privilege of sharing a change room with her earlier in the summer. Um, 17, Shamari Atapatu, the Sri Lankan captain. It's been an amazing year. She She's, she's broken all kinds of records. Um, number one for runs scored, the Sri Lankan opener, 720 runs, 200s um, in T20s, that is, as well. Um, and a career best, 195 not out against South Africa in an ODI that they chased 302 in Poxus Shroom, however you say that, yeah. place, word, whatever. Um, yeah, the amount of runs she scored this year has been phenomenal and also has handy off spin and she'll she'll take a few wickets as well. So, yeah, number 17, Shmarian. Mm. Considering that Sri Lankan team is respectfully pretty rubbish, like she is absolutely incredible in comparison to her to her peers there. And yeah, what a player she is to watch. Another player that's really exciting to watch is the proud owner of the hashtag headball. Travis Head didn't play in October, so he kind of finds himself a little bit further down the ranking, but nearly scored a thousand runs in all formats for Australia across the course of the year so far. And again, is another one of these guys that's going to have this BGT five test match series to go out and score an absolute full of runs in. I think that's going to be one of the best series in in modern modern history. I think I don't know whether it's going to surpass the one that the, the last time India toured when India turned Australia over, but I think pound for pound, I think they look who incredibly well matched and well balanced teams and if it wasn't on at one o'clock in the morning i might even watch some of it number 15 again i've got another left-handed opening batter um and we've got shmriti mandana coming in at 15 and she is number four ranked in odi and number fifth ranked in T20 cricket, according to the ICC. And, but she's perhaps gone a little bit under the radar of recent times. Now, I don't know if that's reflective of sort of how India have, have been going as a nation in global competitions in the women's game um, of late. But for her as an individual, she scored over a 1,000 runs across both ODIs and T20s this year. So she is a 
very, very consistent performer at the top of the order, so elegant to watch, um, but perhaps hasn't kicked on how she could have done. So she scored over a thousand runs um, and has 300s in ODIs, but in T20 cricket, which is what um, the women's game have been playing of late, mm-hmm. she only has a high score of 60 uh, this year. But again, she she's probably going to score runs against you, let's be honest. She's very, very consistent for the Indians. Yeah, quality, quality cricketer, as is number 14, Nat Skiver Brunt. One of the, actually, to be fair, like it feels like the traditional all-rounder in the men's game is is kind of going. Um, that kind of classic seam bowling all-rounder that, that whacks it a bit is kind of just disappearing a little bit right now. Um, but Nat Skiver Brunt is certainly keeping that role alive in the world. You've put down here, consistently been one of the best all-rounders in women's international cricket for the last decade. I think you can just quite happily get rid of the word women's out of that statement. Like she is one of the best all-rounders in international cricket in the last decade by a distance as well. Um, So yeah, sat in there at 14th. um, Again, that kind of schedule will start coming back towards her kind of, I think, favor. What she had one innings, scored 107. Um, So yeah, a bit more cricket than that, I think. And will quite comfortably see herself sat in that top 10, maybe even top five, I think, in the not-too-distant future. Yeah, it definitely feels like 14 felt a bit felt yeah. a bit low. I felt a bit bad um, putting putting her in there. But yeah, hasn't actually played that much cricket. Um, number 13, I've got another English counterpart this time, Harry Brook. Now, I mean, I don't think he actually played that much in October, mm. but... September, I don't know if you remember, he scored 317 against Pakistan in one of those test matches. And that was absolutely phenomenal striking. The partnership that he and Joe Root had was Mm -hmm. unbelievable. And he scored over 1,200 runs across all formats for England in 2024. Um, 300s and 550s. And yeah, he's still very much a player on the up. We've seen how good he is. Um, already in his kind of short international career that he's had and he's going to continue to dominate for years and obviously he went really well against New Zealand the last time England were over there a couple of years ago so definitely definitely could see Harry Brook breaking into the top 10. Yeah for sure he's already got himself like penciled in as one of the the future kind of fab four hasn't he Um, which I think people have started to make comparisons to to the Root, Smith, Coley, Williamson kind of band with with Brooke and a guy that we're going to speak about in the not-too-distant future. Um, Marazan Cap at 12, another one of the classic all-rounders that, I say, Mench seems to be kind of disappearing, but number one ranked ODI all-rounder in the world at the moment, 893 runs across all formats. Um, I must admit, I'm not particularly caught up on what the future of women's uh, South African cricket looks like and to what tours they may or may not have. I think, actually, no, now I've said that out loud, I'm pretty sure England are going to South Africa and touring that. So I am very clued up and I know exactly what I'm talking about. And everything I've said about Nat Silverbrunt and Sophie Eccleston all rings true to Maris Ancap. She will have plenty of opportunities to do runs, take wickets. Um, and yeah, again, could well be another one. I don't see her climbing quite as high as what Nat Silverbrunt does, um, but we'll see. Yeah, one thing I will just say actually on um, Marazan Cap is that I think she's been she's been rested for the first few games of the England tour, and I think oh. that's due to the way that the Big Bash contracts work. So she's actually tied oh, okay. into a Big Bash contract with Melbourne Stars now. I think she's on a multi year deal, and Australia have kind of gate kept their their multi year contract side of things. So wow. you have to play, you have to be available to play all of those games. So essentially, South Africa rested right. Cap, but South Africa aren't allowed to play with their own players basically is what we're saying what a, what a wild kind of world that is that international cricket falls below a bit of franchise stuff over in Australia yeah something like that but she will have a t- I'm pretty sure she will be playing as much against England just before Christmas so that's super exciting for South Africa and England that's for sure now back to to the men's game now, coming in just outside the top 10, we've got one of the best white ball cricketers and mystery spinners around in Rashid Khan, the Afghanistan 
all rounder. He is an all rounder because he can whack it with the bat. Like we've seen that enough. But his bowling speaks for itself. Um, he's number two ranked in ODIs, and I did see. I think he's he's promoted up to number four. Good. Much yesterday. Get him opening. Um, in in t- no in T twenty. Yeah, the the ranking for that. Um, yeah, oh, not, not in the batting order. Yeah, just get him yeah. up the batting order. We don't want to see him at number eight. Get him up there, lads. He hits bombs. Get him up there. But yeah, he's he's taken 34 wickets in mm. 2024 across both formats, averaging under 11. So yeah, he is still very much a very good bowler. Pretty he good. I do wonder. I, I, I've always wondered with him as to at what point there might be a, a drop-off like all through his career, and that just hasn't really been yet. And I've almost kind of waited for, almost waited for either people to figure him out and kind of similar to what we spoke about Eccleston, kind of be a little bit more kind of watchful maybe or or kind of whatever that might be. Also kind of wondered kind of how long the longevity of cricket in Afghanistan um, was actually going to be generally. Um, but yeah, he's still still hanging about. I I feel like, I don't know. I feel like he could sneak into a top 10, but I I feel like he could more than not I think he'll be floating outside of it just because Afghanistan don't really play test cricket and I think that would be a big opportunity for him to obviously score a hat load of points in in the format of our new imaginary scoring system that we've just caught up with Um, number 10 we're into the top 10 the top 10 is here folks how exciting is that there are a lot of players in this top 10 that you may not be expecting to see there may be some players that you may have expected to send already but number 10 Dipti Sharma um 10 wickets in October, um, moved on, managed to kind of shake the instant at Lords with Charlie Dean, which is great, but 27 T20 wickets in the year, 13 ODI wickets. She Every time you turn the TV on and India's women's team are playing, it feels like Dipti Sharma is bowling and it feels like she is an absolute nightmare for whichever of the poor buggers it is stood down the other end with a cricket bat in their hands. Yeah, she's always playing tricks, is Dipti, but she's very much uh, a game changer based on sort of the cricket that I've seen her producing in the past year. So deservedly sneaks in at, at number 10. Now, at number nine, I've got someone that's had a phenomenal year leading her side. South African mm. captain Laura Wolfart was a leading run scorer at the recent Women's T20 World Cup and obviously got them to the final where they unfortunately fell short against New Zealand, but they're sort of backed up the fact that they've made two finals in a row in in the T in the Women's T Twenty World Cup, and Laura Wolfart's had a massive plot to play in both of those tournaments. So yeah, her form has been phenomenal. Um, she's got the most o- ODI runs of any batter in twenty twenty four, and she is yeah an unbelievable player. She scored a career best hundred and eighty four not out in in the game against Sri Lanka that I mentioned that. Jamari Atapati <laughs> scored yeah. her 195 not out. Um, so, yeah, a, a phenomenal run scorer. And, yeah, definitely more to come for Wolf Up, but deservedly at number nine. How long um, How long has she been captain for? It's uh, a great question. Because she, she feels like, and I, 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 again, I don't watch it wildly or too closely, but it feels like she was always incredibly talented. But having since been given this captain armband has had that kind of classic um boost of stats and performances with that added responsibility to lead the team. Yeah, it's almost like she's blossomed a little bit more and, and eked a bit more out of yeah. the potential and, and stuff that we've seen from her over the past few years. So yeah, a really good move for her, no doubt. Yeah. West Indies, Hayley Matthews in at number eight. Um number one ranked T twenty batter, number two ranked ODI all rounder and number four ranked T20 batter in the world. Um, how can you not have somebody with those kind of accolades sat in your top 10? Again, it, she's another one of those. It does feel like at the moment with the women's game that there are real, real standouts in each of the individual teams without actually having, with the exception of, of in England, Australia, and I suppose India to a lesser extent at the moment, they've almost got a squad of good players. Whereas the West Indies, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, New Zealand, have got kind of a gun and then kind of 10, 10 or so kind of others that are there to support that one gun, if that makes sense. And 
feels like Hayley Matthews is a is a similar kind of blueprint to, to that at the moment in international cricket with the West Indies. Yeah, again, she's she's dominated for them for quite a few years. And again, since kind of being captain and taking on that role in the past couple of years, has just accelerated her game even more so and doing it more regularly against those better nations that we mentioned, Australia, England, um, etc. Number seven, Josh Hazelwood, the Australian scene bowler. He's taken 29 wickets in just five test matches in 2024, and that comes in an average under 40. That's mental. He's only bowled 148 overs, right, in the whole of 2024. Um, in Sorry, that's in test match cricket. Yeah. And the next lowest amount of overs bowled in five tests is Rabada and obviously he's had a brilliant a brilliant time of late as well um obviously Australia is still the number one test team in the world at the moment Mm. um and Josh Hazelwood has been a massive part of that and he's been their leading wicket taker for sort of four months in 2024 despite not actually playing that much cricket and he didn't play in October so yeah Big summer ahead for Hazelwood and those Australian bowlers. He um he's always felt like the most skillful of those three Australians. Uh, and I, not to say that Stark and Cummins aren't at all, but Hazelwood has always felt like the most skillful of the three of them. Um, so to go, form's interesting, isn't it? Though because as you said, he's played five Test matches, he's got twenty nine wickets, and goes into this five Test series against India, and you think, oh, he's in great form. Yeah, but. He is, but like, how long ago was that form that he was in? Like, a lot's changed since since then to go into this next series. So, um, I mean, I, he's he's going to do well, isn't he? Let's be honest. And I mean, in six, one of the guys that he's going to have to go up against is Yashavi. Is that the right? Yes, yes, yes. Have I? How do you pronounce that? I name? don't even know how you say his first name. Jaiswal, but... number six. Um, yeah, up the top of the order for India now, um, and absolutely bombs it. I saw. I saw somebody in, I think they were netting in Perth and they were training at the Gabba and somebody had like walked around the outside and they picked up this kookaburra that Jaiswal had deposited out of the wacker whilst having a, a net in a build up to this, this BGT series. So um seems like he might be striking them quite cleanly. Um, only one of two players to have scored a thousand runs over the course of 2024, which is of course behind Joe Root. Um, but he has played less. Obviously, goes into this five test series. Will get probably can't see either or one of those teams winning by an innings. Um, so I think we'll have ten opportunities to go out there and score runs. And I think yeah, could well move up. But I said this top five is stacked. Joe. Yes, we're going into the top five, and again, probably not a nation that. I feel like people forget about this nation and sort of the records that some of their players consistently break, like whether that's wicket-taking or run-scoring. And this guy has done this year and recently unbelievably well. Kamindu Mendes, he's very much in his infancy in his Test match career, right? But he's already surpassed a 1,000 Test match runs in just his eight test match and it was his 13th innings um, and that was on his way to a career best 182 not out in Gaul against New Zealand in their recent series where they mm. beat New Zealand before New Zealand went and beat India so yep. so Sri Lanka from, are better than India take from that what you will um, he scored 943 runs an average of 94 with 500s in 2024 which is mm. equal for the year with Joe Root, who also has scored 500s. However, Mendes has played 13 fewer innings. So some phenomenal numbers for Kamindu Mendes and deservedly finds himself at number five. Yeah, I, I'm i excited to see what happens with Kamindu Mendes. I think I think all of us, every cricket fan around the world has, although you say they're, they're kind of, they can be quite forgettable, but some we all have a bit of a soft spot, I think, for Sri Lanka and a a particular Sri Lankan cricketer, whether that's Sangakkara, whether it's Jaya Wardner, whether it's Chiminda Vas, whether it's Tilakaratni Dilshan, whether it's Jaya Surya, whether it's Murali, whoever it might be, I think everybody somewhere around the world has got kind of a bit of a soft spot. They're, they're not dissimilar to the West Indies for me. 
in the fact that you look at it and you go, I'd love to see them. Like, I'd love to see them doing well, you know? And I feels like they fit that same kind of mold. So, yeah, he's been a real kind of shining light for Sri Lanka, which has been really, really good to see. Uh, number four, New Zealand. And the final female cricketer in this 25 is Amelia Kerr. And I had a look through the numbers this morning and yeah, a few people have had some pretty decent Octobers, you know, when you look at what people have managed to achieve. And Amelia Kerr has picked up 19 wickets in October, um, 29 in T20 in the World T20. What's that? Including a record-breaking 15 at an average of 7.3. Best of four for 26 versus Australia. She's a name that just feels like it's been around forever as well. Um, I, I'm sure, I don't know. How old is she, do you know? So... Uh... 24 perhaps yeah and it feels like she probably made her international debut when she was 15 or something because it, it feels like she's been around for donkeys but again quality cricketer right up there won the player of the match in the final uh yeah i again who knows who knows where this is going to end up but i think very very deserved of being in that top five and i think probably would surprise a few people the fact that she is fourth in this list and kind of um goes past Wolfart and Matthews and Dipti Sharma and Mandana and Siverbrunt and Marazan Cap. But you can't argue with the fact that you've taken 19 poles in a month. Yeah, she's had a phenomenal, she had a phenomenal T20 Cup and rightly so, one player of the tournament. So her performances are hard to look past. Um, and as you say, sort of at, at the ripe old age of 23, 24, however old she is, still got a very, very experienced head on her within that mm. New Zealand team. Um, but yeah, Amelia Kerr coming in at number four. So we're into the top three, Dan. We're into Trying. the top three. Tense. It's tense. Number three, we've got Jasper Bumra. I mean, what a player. He's taken the most wickets this year for the SEMA in test matches. 41 wickets and an average just under 17 in just the nine test matches. So, again, he's, he's not played loads, but obviously he'll be coming up against the Aussies. And, I mean, he is frighteningly good still. I mean, that that action, that ball release, we always talk about it. I'm sure it's, he's living rent-free in some, uh, some of the heads of the batters that he's got out over the years. But, yeah, he finds himself in the top three and was obviously... Player of the tournament in India's T20 World Cup winning campaign back in June. And he saved 56 wickets across all formats in 2024, an average under 15. So, yeah, his numbers are pretty good. And I look forward to seeing him against the Aussies. Yeah, me too. Me too. If it wasn't at three o'clock in the morning. Otherwise, I'd be there. Um, number two, the man that scored 1,338 runs at an average of 58, five hundreds. He is 100 points clear of Kane Williamson in the ICC test match batting rankings. I think I've said that right. And at number two is, of course, Joe Root. Um, some might say should be number one. We don't. We don't. We've got Joe Root at number two. Could well be number one because obviously he goes off to New Zealand for, I think it's three tests, isn't it, against the Kiwis or the Black Caps. Um, and undoubtedly, if that form continues, there's not to say that he isn't going to finish with 800s and uh, over 1,500, 1,600 runs. Is this another year that he could kind of chase down? Is it Eunice Khan, the um, the guy that's got the most number of runs in a in a test year? That's good. That's good stuffage to have to try and pull out. Mohammed Yusuf, yeah. 1,788. So... He's going to have to go and score pretty much bang on 400 in six innings against New Zealand, which isn't beyond the realms of possibility. Could he beat his own 2021 record of 1,708? Maybe slightly more likely, but it does feel like he's a little way off that, doesn't it? But yeah, number two, Joe Root. Well, that brings us to the top number one ranked player in the first edition of the R Cricket Power Rankings. And in the month of October, he became the fastest player to reach 300 test wickets in terms of balls bowled. And he is also the number one ranked test bowler in the world. And that is because he took 14 wickets in the month of October, an average of nine. 14, an average of nine. Mm -hmm. Kagiso Rabada, 
I mean, what a player. I think he's under just so underrated still. Um outlined by the fact that he's become the fastest three hundred test match wickets is no mean feat whatsoever. Yeah. Um he is a gun player and yeah, the absolute leader in that South African lineup. Um and will be rightly compared to Dale Stane, I'm sure. He's um he's still one of those seamers at the moment in the world that you look at and having never faced him and hopefully never have the displeasure of doing so, but that you still look at him and you go, he's scary, you know? Like there's 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 a few, there's a few, and he is one of them that you look at and you go, nah. Just like the mannerisms, the facial expressions, the the obviously the speed, the bounce, the the action, um, the 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 I think there's probably a few little verbals, the stare downs and all this other stuff that you just know if you were stood down the other end with your pads on and your helmet and your cricket bat, you'd be going, uh, just yeah, I mean, I'll just try and get out of the way of this one. And do you know, it feels like he's one of those guys right now. Um, and I think deservedly so, app at number one. Um, but there you go. There's the top 25 for November. We will come back again in the middle of December and catch up with to what's happened across the world in that month or that month period. Um, we'll do a little bit of an adjustment. We do need to have a little bit of fine tuning as to how we kind of measure these stats, but we've got a rough idea and I think it'll work. I think it'll work really well. Um, we will need to have a, a conversation at some point to find out as to who may or may not be kind of kicking around, but that might all be done based on statistics as to who's had a good one. Um, but look, Joe, thank you so much for, for, for getting involved. Thank you for the preparation. Um, I am excited to see where this series goes. Um, I think there's levels to it. I think there's ways that this could be made better. But Joe, thanks for your time. And um, those that have listened and watched, we appreciate it. You can drop comments. You can let us know as to whether we you think we got things in the right place or the wrong place or anything like that. And uh, we'll see you in about a month's time for the next edition of the Power Rankings. There will be a podcast in the middle, um, but we're going to do these monthly because we can't keep up with it more than that. So, yeah. See you later.